Welcome to episode 112. There is no better time than right now to plan your vacation getaway. Don't have the time to plan? Use the friendly travel agents at 3D Travel Company by going to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and clicking the Book Now button today on the left-hand side. Hurry and plan your trip today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest is the voice of Neptunia from Darkwing Duck, the voice of Dr. Carbuncle from Biker Mice from Mars, and so much more. I don't have a clip for you today for many of these characters, but I hope you'll stay tuned for today's amazing interview with our special guest. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, I am so pleased to be bringing Susan Silo to the show. Susan, thank you for joining me on the show today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Trenton. I'm, uh, I'm very excited to uh, get started with all of this because I'm so grateful for, you know, all our wonderful fans. I mean, that's what keeps all of us going, believe me. Oh, absolutely. The fans, uh, you know, especially getting a chance to dive into your life and your career and get a, get to know you a little bit more personally, uh, definitely help make that, uh, you know, something for the fans to uh, dive into and, and, and grab onto, you know? Yes, and tomorrow I'm, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, downtown at the Reef, uh, which is part of the L.A. Mart, like a convention center here in Los Angeles, uh, I'm doing an autograph show. And um, part of it is uh, what we call a Batvention, because I was in the original uh, Batman series, uh, and I played the Riddler's girlfriend, Mousie. But all the fans from voiceover uh, flock to the booth because, uh, you know, they, they love Mousie, but they sure love the voiceovers. Wow, Susan, that was something I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Mousie, I... Oh, wow. Okay, because I just had Burt Ward. We just interviewed a couple days ago. So, oh. wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we lost Batman. I, I loved Adam. He was so much fun. And, you know, we had no idea it was going to be such an amazingly popular show and then go on and on for decades. Yeah. I've been doing Batventions, you know, all over. And as I said, combined with my voiceover career, which I'm so grateful for, uh, it's been amazing because the fans uh, just go crazy. And I've done, of course, the Comic-Cons, too, you know, for, um, for that as well as um, for the voiceovers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Susan, the very first thing we like to do when we get a special guest on the show, especially for the first time, is to dive into who they are a little bit deeper. So, Susan, tell me about little Susan growing up. Who was she and how did she become the wonderful woman she is today uh, and the, the actress and, and especially the voice actress that you've become? Well, uh, I like to say I was born in a trunk. Um, <laughs> my, my parents were performers. Um, my father was uh, a, a comic and uh, a wonderful actor who had a terrific career on Broadway and then moved uh, to L.A. and moved me to L.A. But I started when I was four years old with my parents on stage in uh, an act, uh, which was years ago. Uh, it was you did uh, you played hotels. It was it was like vaudeville, but. Um, but vaudeville was kind of dying, so uh, you, we went on to other things like television. But uh, at four, um, I was just a tiny little thing who, uh, I was a canary, I sang. <laughs> and dad was the comic, and my mother was what they call a monologist. Uh, Ruth Draper was a famous woman who would do monologues, uh, and that was her act. And she was quite remarkable, and so was my mother. But then my mother dropped out, and it was just Dad and me. And then Dad said, you know what, honey? At eight years old, I think you're ready to be a single. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so I, I went on, and uh, I, I did so, so many different club dates. 
and uh, as a singer. And uh, then Jerry Lewis uh, was my mentor for a while when I was 12. And uh, I, I played the Palace Theater alone. And I had uh, Judy Garland's dressing room as a singer. Wow. And then um, Jerry Lewis, I did uh, Jerry Lewis's special out here in Los Angeles when I was, I believe, 13 or 14, and I had a rock and roll hit record going at the time with um, Dick Clark. I did all of the bandstand <laughs> wow. stuff. Wow. Yeah. So I had, you know, quite a different uh, career. I've, I've done so many different things. And uh, on Broadway, I was in the original West Side Story. Oh, no way. <laughs> yes. Wow. And so I was a dancer and a singer and an actor, and I did the first national tour uh, of West Side Story, which brought me out to Los Angeles. Uh, we started in Denver, and then we ended up in L.A., and then we went to San Francisco and Chicago. But uh, at that time, because television was moving out of uh, New York, and if you didn't have a Broadway show, the work for an actor was not great. So my father said, we're moving to Los Angeles. And that's when my whole on-camera career started. Wow. And the first show I did was the Jack Benny show. <laughs> no way. Yeah, wow. he was amazing. My dressing room was next to uh, Mr. Benny. And uh, he came into my dressing room one day, and, and we had had a fun rehearsal. And he said, you know, Susan, I know you play the piano. And, oh, that was another thing that I did in my lifetime. I had 10 years with the Musicians Guild uh, from six years old to 16. And I was maybe thinking... I might do, uh, you know, the concert uh, stage, but uh -uh, I wanted to be an actor. So. <laughs> and I went to the High School of Performing Arts, by the way, the original one, the same one. Wow. Uh, and we did dance in the streets. We were amazing. It was so much fun. Um, but then, um, so when I was with Mr. Benny, he comes into the dressing and said, I'm going to practice now. Would, would you like to come in and, and hear me play? And I was like, I can't believe it. Jack <laughs> Benny. He's asking me to listen to him play the violin. You know, it was like, <laughs> it was just magic. It was magic. And those were the halcyon days of television. Um, it was like repertory theater. We went from one show to the other show to the other show, you know, from Bonanza to Gunsmoke to uh, Hitchcock to you name it. I did it. Oh, wow. So it was an incredible career. And then I had um, a series that was shot in Europe called Harry's Girls with uh, Larry Blyden. And um, it was for NBC and Colgate was the sponsor. And it was uh, an amazing time because uh, we went to England, to London, to film there. But because of union things, uh, we kind of got kicked out because we couldn't get the visa papers or whatever it was. And we got kicked out to the to the French Riviera. Isn't that sad? Oh, wow. That's sad. I mean, that was just, you know, we cried our eyes out on the, on the Riviera. Um, <laughs> so, it was amazing. And I spoke French, which was a huge help. Oh, yeah. Um, and we were shooting at the Studio de la Victorine in, uh, in Nice. And so we were there for a, a good amount of time. And then we moved to Paris. Boo-hoo. Yeah, and, such a uh, bummer. <laughs> what a bummer. And had such a marvelous time. And then I came back to the States after the series uh, was over and went right back to my on-camera career. And I kept going and going with that one. And then I got into... Uh, on-camera commercials, because there was a time, I don't know if you remember, you may be too young for that, but when you were an actor in those days, the 60s, the 70s, kind of, people who were on screen, you know, as an actor, did not do commercials. Yeah. It was kind of a no-no, uh, because it was like lowering yourself, haha. And now look where we are now, where every actor in the world <laughs> is doing some sort of commercial, be it on camera or voiceover. Yeah. So I did, um, you know, Hunt Snack Pack and Kellogg's, and I was mom to everybody. I did two and a half years of Hunt Snack Pack, and they kept sending me snack packs. <laughs> and uh, had little kids at that time. <laughs> and funny. one of them would open the snack packs. He wouldn't eat it. He'd just open them and leave them all over the house. <laughs> and I, and I was like, I smell something really funny. And I, in a closet, I saw a bunch of these snack packs opened oh, no. and molding. It was really charming. But uh, I was very happy that Hunts liked me. 
And so then um, I kind of morphed into, from commercials, people said, you know, you really have a very interesting quality, and uh, have you thought about doing, you know, just voiceover? And boy, Trenton, did that just change my whole career <laughs> into something absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, first it was commercials, but then when I got into animation, and I was in, uh, you know, the original Smurfs, and Hanna-Barbera with Gordon Hunt and all of that. And I want to tell you uh, that that was tremendous because there you could, you could still be an actor, but you could play anything. You could play so many different roles that you couldn't do, obviously, on camera. Yeah, absolutely. Well, because you can just change your voice a bunch of times and play a bunch of different characters. Exactly, exactly. And for me, it's, you know, the characters are very real. In other words, oh, yeah. when we get up in front of the microphone, we are actually putting on the makeup and the costume and the whole thing in our head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a oh, visual. Very definite. Yeah. Because it's not a voice. It's a character. The character comes first, and then the voice follows. I like I, that. I thought <laughs> that, yes. I've done seminars and uh, uh, classes of my own, and I, I now teach um, some people. You know, I, I pick and choose now because, I, you know, it's time sensitive. I, I don't have all the time, and yeah. I give 900%. But the main thing that I teach and that I, my tenant is you are not doing funny voices. You're not doing the Saturday night party voices yeah. because you can't sustain that. That doesn't, you know, that isn't full three-dimensional uh, creation because those flat screen little creatures up there have to live and breathe. They don't just do a funny voice. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree you with know, you. You know, they have that. a life of their own. So yeah. um, that, uh, that for me was very exciting and also the opportunity to learn and work with the wonderful people who are the talent in animation. I have to say that they are totally amazing. They are totally amazing. They are very intelligent. They're very well trained. Um, they, they give their heart and soul to these, to these characters. Um, and I think it shows on the, on the good quality of animation that we have. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Susan. You know, and, and speaking of animation, one of the ones that people are going to be more familiar with you now, especially if they have younger children, is the character that you play called Nettie Pischetti on Curious George. Yes. Uh, Nettie Pischetti, yes. She's a lovely Italian lady who's married, of course, you know, to Chef Pischetti. Yes. And uh, George, you know, Giorgio, the, the monkey, he's, you know, a very dear friend. He's kind of like family. <laughs> You know, yeah, and he is just—it's uh, a delicious show. Frank Welker, who is uh, the genius in voiceover, <laughs> uh, plays uh, George, and uh, uh, Jim Cummings plays my husband, and uh, Jim plays uh, other characters. Jim and I have worked together. Oh my gosh, on numerous things as well as Frank. Uh, we're like family. I mean, I just did—I just did uh, a show uh, uh, this past Monday. Yeah. And uh, Chris Zimmerman, who is our director, fabulous. I've worked with her since Hanna-Barbera days. Oh, wow. That's how long we all know each other. That's a long time. That's a long time. And we're talking years. We're talking decades. A rich decades. history. And Jimmy McSwain, who is a fantastic uh, voice director oh, and yeah. very, very dear friend, uh, is directing uh, the new show uh, from Hasbro called Micronauts where uh, I play two characters on that one. I play Gamatron and Cinecy. Nice. And um, Gamatron is a very weird, evil robot. Yes. Very strange, very evil robot. <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a pretty wow. creepy girl. <laughs> well, that's a, great, that's a great transition in your voice, Susan. I love... I'm glad you gave us a little sample of that character because uh, it's definitely a, a, a unique transition. Wow. Well, you know, there are all different kinds of characters, you know. I mean, I mean, I mean there's so many different kinds of people that I've played. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, working on that show, you mentioned Frank Welker and Jim Cummings, but you've worked with Jeff Bennett and Reno Romano and E.G. Daly. Uh, the cast oh. on that show is just unbelievably epic. So. 
isn't it? I mean, just one after another. It just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, Gray Delisle, I mean, uh, we worked on um, – on Shaolin Showdown together and Tara Strong, you know, where I was Wuya, the uh, the kind of weirdy thing, and then I was also the lovely Wuya, the human Wuya. <laughs> well, you know, another amazing character that you voiced that is uh, very well known if you're a Biker Mice from Mars fan is Dr. Carbuncle when you played that in 93 when the original series came out and again with the reboot that they did uh, in 2006. What was it like getting to play that uh, sinister character? Ah, yes! Dr. Carbuncle! <laughs> Well, um, he was very interesting. Uh, <laughs> we had uh, a lot of wonderful people on that show, too. Uh, what the, the funniest thing that happened uh, with Dr. Carbuncle was that um, it was a male, and they were auditioning males, including someone who did do the show, Brad Garrett, who is fabulous, as, as you know, on yeah. camera and oh, yeah. over. And um, we got to be friends. And um, so the powers that be were auditioning men. And then for some reason, they said, you know what? Why not try Silo? You know, I, I don't know. She's got, you know, a wide range. And I don't know what she'll come up with. with. <laughs> and so I, I went in and the guys are looking at me. In those days, we didn't record from home. We went actually to the studio yeah. to audition. So we would see the people that we were competing against, you know. Yeah. And it was a, a room full of guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow. like, what's Silo doing here? You know, it's really kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they, so they loved me, right? Rick Unger and, and Tom Tetranarowitz. And they just went, that's it. That's car. We heard it. And we went, that's, that's Carbuncle. There's just, you know. So then it was a <laughs> joke that when there were auditions and there'd be guys coming in and I'd walk in and they'd go, oh, okay, Silo's here. She's probably going to get it. <laughs> wow, that's funny. <laughs> Isn't that silly? That is, Isn't yeah. That you know, wow. she's a guy, and, and Robbie Paulson, I, I used to break him up. He, How about another talented man, huh? Oh, my gosh, uh, yeah. Who has done just about everything. Um, Robbie Robbie would just, I would tickle him so much when I did. He would just, every time <laughs> I finished a, a, a you know, a, a speech or something, and they cut, you know, they cut the recording, and he'd just go, Bravo, bro, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe that came out of your mouth. <laughs> Yeah, William P Peter Blatty, you know, the exorcist. Yeah. 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 So I worked with him uh, on, on um, the exorcist too, I believe it was. And so he was right with me at the microphone and cause he wanted to, you know, just whisper to me certain things. And, but he, he, he looked at me too and said the same thing, Susan, I just can't believe what comes out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Wow, it sounds like and you've had I, some really I, good times. Me, that, that, for me, is an Academy Award. <laughs> that's, that's the best compliment you can get. It doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely. Well, that is so fantastic to know that there was a room full of guys and you got to come in and, and end up grabbing that character with your talented voices. And uh, that's just so awesome. That's a really cool and very unique story to hear, Susan. Yeah, well, you know, there are many stories in the Naked City, as they say. Um, <laughs> um, we, uh, we, we have had... So much fun when we do the work, but but not to forget, not to forget, and people who don't know uh, the voiceover industry is that it is work, you know, yeah. it is it is fun work, and we have a passion for it, but uh, it takes it takes a lot of work and training and stamina. Oh my gosh, you think I mean you can get exhausted? You can I've lost weight standing in front of the microphone all day. <laughs> I bet I could imagine. I absolutely absolutely. Do. It's a great diet, the voiceover diet. <laughs> well, Susan, <laughs> you know, that is quite funny. Uh, Susan, do you remember working on Darkwing Duck as Neptunia? Uh, you know, that's a long time ago. Uh, vaguely, I don't have her uh, voice in my head. I believe Jimmy McSwain directed those, Darkwing Ducks, yeah. But uh, I remember the show, but I don't, I have to hear what they do is um, when we haven't done a, a, a character in a while, yeah. like the Guild Wars, um, I had to, uh, Valerie, I had to do Valerie. They give you a voice reference. They save, obviously, all of that. Yeah. yeah. And they play that for you, and it brings me right back instantly, <laughs> right back. 
But, you know, when you've done so many different things, uh, I'll look at the script and I'll recall it. Uh, I'll certainly uh, recall it if I hear my voice ref. Yeah. But sometimes out of the blue, mm, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to recall because there are hundreds of voices. Yeah. Oh, I understand. But, you know, you got to work on that show, of course, with Jim Cummings, who played Darkwing Duck. And that was one of right. my absolute favorite shows growing up. And that, that had a oh. slew of amazing people on it as well. <laughs> Yes, it, it really did. Uh, who else was on it? Remind me. Katie Lee played Honker. Um, oh, Katie, yes. Yeah. We, we had the same agent. Katie and I did Odyssey together, Adventures in Odyssey. Yeah. What? Uh -huh. You were on Odyssey? Yeah. What did you play? Um, I played, oh, I can't remember her name. I played the woman in the institution that was institutionalized. I was somebody's wife i was okay. a woman who was in the mental institute i'm sorry to laugh no no you're okay she was in a mental institute it's been going for 30 years so there's a lot of adventures in odyssey but it's so amazing to me i was i was actually talking to uh adam wiley and he was telling me he was on adventures in odyssey and i'm going oh my gosh who hasn't been on adventures in odyssey and we <laughs> all have we all have i did that character but then i did another character too yeah, lovely group of people. And, of course, again, all the people. You know who is um, May Margaret, um, Pat Music's uh, daughter? May, Whitman, May Whitman. Okay. May Whitman and I were on Odyssey together. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and June oh, yeah, Ray, May, May. and I mean, I know so many people That's have been on it, yeah. Yeah, oh, my gosh, yeah. And they, and they have a, a, a lovely spirit. The show has a wonderful really really good good-hearted spirit you know talk about a family show i yeah, mean yeah. that's the ideal that's the ideal well and i've been listening to that show since i was two years old the cassette tapes came out as like the happy meal toy back in the uh late 80s early 90s and so i've been ah. listening to that show forever and, and katie lee and i actually met at a live adventures and odyssey show they did about six or seven years ago oh. in dallas and she was my very first oh. guest on the show so how nice for you. She's a lovely yeah. woman, isn't she? Oh, she is. She's a she's a doll. And, you know, she she talked about Jenny McSwain from My Little Pony, so I know Jenny very yeah, well. I did My Little Pony, too. I was a pony there somewhere. Oh, my gosh. What it. haven't you done, Susan? <laughs> Forget it. We don't and, need to talk and, about know, what you um, have um, done. We need to talk about what you haven't done. Because... <laughs> uh, right. and of course, Fancy Cartwright oh. and I. Uh, you know, we're pals when she came to town, oh uh, as as well as Pat Fraley. You know, all these Midwestern -y people came. Well, he yeah. wasn't Midwestern; he was like Canada or something. But yeah. but she was Midwestern. You know, a little little homespun, little blondie girl. And um, <laughs> we did. Um, oh, did, did we do Jake? No, that was another. That was Rusey Taylor. There's so many shows. I'm trying to remember everything for you. Um, <laughs> Uh, we did um, we did the Glow Friends. We did the Glow oh, Friends yes, together. Oh yes, Glow Friends with Pat Fraley. Yeah, we did Glow Friends. That was that was Nance. Yeah. And uh, so we were friends since then. She oh, lives, wow. as a matter of fact, not far from me, as well as <laughs> Charlie Adler. Oh, Let's I love Charlie. Me. I love Charlie. Yeah, Char oh, Charlie's been he's on like the show. He's like a brother to me. He is an amazing talent yeah, as an oh, actor yeah. as well as a director, and he's also an artist. I mean. This man is multi-talented, oh, yeah. multi, multi, multi-talented. And oh, yeah. I, we worked together on Girlfriends, and he had just come from New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. He had quite a wild career bouncing between uh, L.A. and New York with his different shows and things. And, uh, yeah, we had him on the show last year when I first started. And Nancy Cartwright oh. and I just, uh, just did an interview uh, not too long ago, just before you and I. And she hasn't, uh, you know... She hasn't even aired at this point, but uh, she will. But, uh, yeah, Nancy is such a sweetheart. We were talking about her new movie that's coming out here in October. So, Oh, she's terrific. Well, she lives not far, and, and Charlie lives down the road a piece. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we bump into each other at the market and <laughs> at all the places we love to eat, and we end up eating together, you know, and we'll, we'll make dinner dates. And, oh, wow. you know, it, it's just it's such a lovely community. It yeah. really is. I'm so... I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful for it. And I, I hope I'll do it, you know, for the rest of my life. Oh yeah, absolutely. Susan. Well, you've done such amazing work, especially one of my favorite characters you did was Mama Mouskowitz on Feifel's American Tales, the TV oh, show. Oh yeah, Mama 
mouse go with survival. And you 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 gotta be careful, my honey, be, because you know there's terrible people out there and, and animals that could eat you. So <laughs> come, 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 sit down, sit down, and I'll tell you a story. Yeah. <laughs> I love those stories because uh, you know, being the young immigrant family from Russia and their yeah. Jewish background, it just it's so very um, it's just a wonderful story that was told, a wonderful tale, you could say. <laughs> but, uh, oh boy, you punster you. <laughs> but I really, I'm so glad, Susan, that you were a part of that legacy of characters because they are so special and unique. And uh, I, I really am uh, excited to talk with you today about all these wonderful things. And you've mentioned so many things today that I didn't even know. Uh, your career <laughs> is just so vast. It's, it's literally something we would probably have to revisit on another interview sometime. But, you know, you also got to play on the amazing Jetsons the movie as a uh, Gertie Furbelow and that was such a great movie it was it really was well you know what you're talking about uh, goes down in history you know all of us uh, are in the library of Congress um, because of what we do and think of the joy that you bring to uh, um, a child audience but what's so wonderful that I've noticed is that from childhood to adulthood we are treasured. Yeah. We, you know, we animated characters are treasured and, and actors, of course. And then they pass it on, which I've noticed at, all, you know, all the events that I go to and perform at or autograph shows, that they bring their children and start them off with the old stuff. So it never dies. Never. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And it's so wonderful you know, that those that legacies are passed alive. on. That keeps me alive. Yeah. It does. It'll never die. Me young. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan, what what kind of advice would you give to someone who might be looking at getting into this crazy wild world of acting? Mm, well, um, what I always say uh, to newbies is, um, first of all, all of us, all of us somewhere have done uh, animated voices, right? Yeah. When you were in your bedroom, when you were a child, and you, and, and, and you were sent to your room, let's say, and you were angry, and your mother told you, you didn't, you go in there and you just think about what just happened. And you imitated your mother. You imitated teachers. You imitated your friends. You imitated whatever you felt like imitating, but you were <laughs> doing voiceovers. Yeah. You didn't know it. You didn't even know it. That's the beginning. In other words, that's something uh, that I talk to newbies about. Have you imitated? Do you listen? Are you aware? How is your ear? How is your ear and how does it relate to what comes out of your mouth? Can you mimic? Can you do this? Can you do that? Then I sincerely feel that, you know, really delving into acting training is a very, very good beginning. And also, it can go hand in glove, because when I teach, I teach voice acting, not voices. I teach voice acting. Yeah. So if you're, doing, if you're uh, training, but whether it be in, in school or uh, with a private coach or whatever, uh, or doing improv, uh, improv classes, you know, improvisational uh, work, is very, very helpful, because a lot of the time, um, when they, when the writers are, are really um, very confident with the work that we're doing, they let us ad lib and play, let the characters start to really grow. So that's very, very helpful. But uh, my, my overall feeling is you do have to train. And hopefully you're, you're with someone who will say, I think you can be competitive. I think that you will be able to do this. It's not just a game. You're not just playing. And if you have the talent, and don't forget, that's a big word. You really have to have the talent. But you have to have, you can't just have the talent. It's too wild. You need to be trained. And I luckily got really trained on the job because I already was there. I was an actor who was a working actor and kind of morphed into all these different genres, you understand. Yeah. But someone, someone who is new um, really needs to know what it really is to stand in front of the microphone and bring a script alive. 
Absolutely. Well, I think the uh, the advice you have is very solid, Susan. And I love how you talk about the character development and not just doing funny voices, but really diving into a three dimensional character. I think it's it's very solid advice. Yes, yes, because people really don't realize that that's what you do. And then when they uh, when they start training with me, they go, "Boy, this is work." And I went, <laughs> "Yeah." Yeah, and they lose a few pounds standing there with you. <laughs> yeah, right. And I go, see, I do two things for you. I'm your, your nutritionist, your dietitian, and I'm also your voice coach. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think sometimes people realize how much of a, a workout your diaphragm is going to get when you're doing voiceover, Ooh. you know? <laughs> yeah, you got that. And and uh, luckily, as, as a young uh, uh kid, you know, I was, I was a singer and I was a trained singer. My father was also an opera singer and oh, wow. a singer, uh, on Broadway. And so, uh, you know, I, I had the pipes, I had the pipes. I mean, I have, a, I, we, when we did West Side Story, uh, we didn't have mics on us like they do on Broadway now. Yeah. The mics were in the foot, they were in the footlights, they were in the foot. There was no other microphone. And if you're at the Winter Garden Theater, which is the biggest theater in new york you have to hit that top balcony yeah absolutely so they can hear it and i have no problem and i'm a little girl and i was littler then <laughs> well and it's all about learning how to use the diaphragm to project and uh, not needing a mic so absolutely it's amazing. absolutely and um, I just have a very powerful voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell. I can tell. It's a very powerful, very unique, and very versatile voice. It's very, uh, it's very unique to be able to speak with you uh, about things that I've grown up loving and even some that I grew up loving and didn't know you were a part of, which is super special when I learned something oh. unexpected. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel good. And now you now look at some more things and you'll, you'll find it out. Boy, I, I, you know, when I check the IMDBs or the whatever and I go, oh, I don't remember I did that. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> when I'm on a panel or something and they say, remember when you did whatever? And I'm going, I uh, did? Was I good? <laughs> that's funny. Well, you know, and, and like you say, you've done so much that sometimes it is hard to remember everything, especially if it's a one-off or something. Um, but, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it is, it makes things more special for me. And I know for my listeners, it has to as well. Susan, when we have someone on the show that is able to discuss some of the things that we've talked about today, you know, any, any person's career, it makes them more special for me when I watch them, when I play the video games they're in, whatever the, uh. you know, whatever it is, it makes it more real for me and it makes me feel more connected to the to the works that have been created by the uh, by actors, you know, and your fellow actors and actresses. So it just it you makes know, it so special. I don't think so anyone special. has ever said it that way. I think that that's an amazing point. That that's a very valuable point. I, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. You're welcome. Um, You're very welcome. How lovely. Hmm. Well, and it, it, it's like getting to know, uh, you know, when you meet someone and you're like, hey, how's it going? Great. That's cool. I, I kind of know you. I've looked at your IMBD. I'm oh, okay. Cool. Who Susan Silo. Okay. But now when I've gotten to talk to you, it's not just reading the words on the page in essence, it's physically getting to know you. You know, it's like a casual meeting at the coffee shop. Hey, how you doing? Great. Okay. But now I'm at the coffee shop and I've got time to talk and we're sitting there and we're having a conversation. We're chatting it up over our coffee. Yeah. I get to know you and now I have more of a personal relationship with you. And that's part of the reason we do this show and why it's called uh. Rooted That Voice is not just to, uh, you know, help people discover who the actor is in picture form because I create a web page for them as well, but so that people right. really feel this connection on a more personal level, like, man, I really know Susan Silo. And so that when they go back and either watch these things they've already watched or things they've never heard of, and they go and watch for the first time, they fall more in love with it because they have a more personal connection to it than they've ever had in their life. That boy, I'm telling you, that is very, <laughs> Very well said, and and uh, I, I take it to heart. You, as I, I said, I I don't think um, anyone has ever been as eloquent as you are in saying what <laughs> you're you. saying. And it, I think we also need to be connected to you as our fans, yeah. and, and and we need to um, know your feelings. And when I hear your feelings being expressed, it means something to me too, Trenton. It really does. I'm glad it does. It really does makes it it makes everything we do just 
uh, in this day and age, especially with disconnection, it makes us feel more human and connected. So thank you for that. Thank you. Lovely. You're very welcome. You know, when I created this show, Susan, I didn't fully know what it would develop into. But over the last year, my show just turned one years old, August 5th. It's it's blossomed. Thank you so much. You know, it's blossomed. But a, a mission statement that I created for my company, because this is more than just a podcast, it is a company that I'm building and a networking of wonderful people and an archive of voiceover actors and actresses that I am establishing for the community of uh, lovers of voiceover, lovers of cartoon, uh, people who are just interested in this, or maybe they're looking at joining voiceover as a career. But the mission statement I created, Susan, was uh, the desire to inspire, motivate, and educate people, whether it's something they're looking at doing as a, as a job path or just something they love because they're into voiceover as uh, a fan of cartoons or different works in themselves. Um, and, and it's so it's wonderful for me to hear you say those words to me, Susan, because I feel like in some ways I've kind of inspired and motivated you and, and the essence of being able to, to motivate, inspire and educate my audience is wonderful. But if I'm able to do that for my special guest as well, I feel like I've absolutely done what I set out to do when I originally created the show over a year ago. Oh, well, well, uh, it's kind of a mutual admiration society here, Absolutely. and I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it, Trenton. I am too. Well, Susan, I have one final question for you, and we will wrap this interview up. Okay. The question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Hmm, good question. Um, you know, uh, we as performers love the applause, and we love the laughter. I'd like to exit laughing. They say, you know, uh, that we can't get enough love. Um, what comes across the airwaves when people listen to us and then they say, oh, I just love this character, I just love, that's showing love, I feel, to me. And honey, I can't get enough love. <laughs> I love that, Susan, I really do. So that's that's the legacy. I want I want people to remember when they say the name Susan Silo to have a smile on their face. Oh, what a and wonderful it, what a wonderful legacy. Yeah, yeah that's what I'd like <laughs> to leave. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, Susan, and for all of the wonderful stories and, and backgrounds on some of these amazing actors that you've partnered with on projects, uh, whether it be voiceover or TV shows or movies or whatever. Um, but, you know, as we close up the show today, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show, Susan. Would you please give us a special closeout today as Nettie Pischetti? Of course I will. Uh, three minestrones and a one fruit smoothie, chef. Uh, chef Pescetti. Uh, I, I let the customer know her fruit smoothie will take a little longer. Giorgio, what are you doing over there? Oh, I see someone coming in the restaurant, and it is Trenton. Trenton, come in, come in, come in. Uh, get, gnocchi, gnocchi, get away from him. Get away from him. Stop. Oh, you see? Uh, arrivederci. Ciao. Well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Susan Silo, the voice of Neptunia from Darkwing Duck, and so much more. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice? I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next time for our special guest, Bill Farmer, the voice of Disney's Goofy for the past 31 years. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself, who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice. <laughs>